I am Dr. Teresa Bowling. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate a supraclavicular block or catheter. The most important thing we do to start is to position the patient, which can be critical when we're trying to achieve a successful block. You can see this patient um, has been put in a stretcher in a semi-upright position. We typically use a folded blanket and or towel to place beneath the scapula to optimize the distance between the stretcher and the needle insertion site. As you can see in this um, video now, we have a much more open space in which to prep and drape and to place our needle. For a supraclavicular block, the first thing we do is position the patient. This patient's arm is adjacent to her side and her neck and head are turned opposite the side we're going to block. Basically, we're looking for the groove right above the clavicle, and this is the image you get in almost every patient, no matter how big or small they are, as you place an ultrasound probe right above their clavicle. And this model has a beautiful supraclavicular plexus view on ultrasound. In the middle of the screen, you can see the subclavian artery pul pulsating. And again, we can confirm with color Doppler. And very often, if you don't have the probe in the right position, it appears, it appears as if you have two arteries, and you get some artifact. I'm going to adjust the probe a little bit. And we're looking for the, what's typically called the cluster of grapes. And it's very well demonstrated right here on this model. The subclavian artery lies immediately above the first rib. And as you scan laterally, you can see the pleura and the lung come into view. And again, the cluster of grapes, which is a supraclavicular approach to the brachial plexus. On the left-hand side of the screen is a lateral, and on the right-hand side of the screen is a medial side of this patient. We're going to insert the needle here. She's very superficial, she's about a centimeter below the skin surface, so the insertion will be the very shallow approach, immediately hugging the ultrasound probe. As the needle's inserted, it will come in here, and our first injection will be deep to the cor in the corner pocket, as they say, to make sure we anesthetize the ulnar nerve. We'll inject 15 mLs of local anesthetic in the corner pocket. Once we confirm spread of local anesthetic, we will remove the needle about a half a centimeter and inject more superiorly to get the upper levels of the brachial plexus. At that point, we will inject the final injectate of 15 mLs of half percent ropivacaine. Once we confirm that we have good spread of local anesthetic, we will either remove the needle if it is a single shot block or place a catheter. The important thing to note about a supraclavicular catheter is you do not want to thread the catheter too far. The key here is to only thread the catheter about a centimeter or half a centimeter beyond the distance of the needle tip in order to ensure that you are optimizing the distribution of local anesthetic in the plexus and not far away from the plexus. This ultrasound video shows the brachial plexus in the supraclavicular view, just lateral to the subclavian artery. To the right of the screen, you're going to see the insertion of a 2-inch 17-gauge TUI needle approaching the brachial plexus. The needle will come in and out of plane as the ultrasound moves slightly in one direction or another. We continue to advance the needle towards the brachial plexus, hoping to achieve to put the tip of the needle deep to the plexus to get into that corner pocket where the ulnar nerve lives. Once the needle is in the corner pocket, we will confirm that with injection of local anesthetic, looking for a pool of local anesthetic deep to the plexus. Very often after injecting, you'll see the plexus rise above the artery. Our assistant is going to start to inject local anesthetic, and you'll see a pool of black local anesthetic develop around the plexus. And very often at this point, you will see the tip of the needle come into plane as it becomes hyperechoic amongst the hypoechoic local anesthetic. You see the pooling of local anesthetic here now. After depositing half the local anesthetic there, we will back up the needle slightly and redirect it in a more cephalad direction to bathe the upper parts of the brachial plexus in another 15 mLs of local anesthetic, half percent ropivacaine, for a total volume of 30 mLs in this location. This block sets up immediately, and that's why it's called the spinal of the arm.